I'm Bruce Sauter uh, with Workbench 2.0, and uh, we uh, design and manufacture workspace furniture for small space living. And all of our quality crafted products are made from solid white ash hardwood, uh, and that comes from sustainable managed forests. We're here today to, to talk about sustainability. We're just outside of Antigo, Wisconsin, at Kretz Lumber and Mill, and we have Tim here as a head forester with Kretz to talk about sustainability. So what we do as foresters is we talk to private landowners to understand what their goals are in owning that forest and that woodlot. And we try to assist them in meeting their goals through forest management. Forest management is a lot of things that uh, occur in the forest through thinnings, uh, harvest periodically through out the life of that forest to help improve the health and vigor of the trees that remain in the forest. So as a forester, what I do is I, I will mark the hardwood trees that need to be harvested in that thinning operation. And there's reasons why we take out each sp specified tree. We look at disease, we look at that tree may be suppressed by dominant trees around them that will die within the next 15 years. So we look to harvest those trees out and utilize them in products. What we're doing is we're coming in and taking out those high risk trees that have uh, a very good possibility of splitting in the wind. So this is a tree that is designated to be marked and harvested. And what that does is the remaining trees that are there opens up space for those trees to grow at a faster rate as well as to expand the crown of those uh, existing trees over time. Trees in the northern hardwood forest will grow to about 100 to 120 years before they're near maturity. You look around and what you see are large diameter trees, small diameter trees. These are all nurtured over time in periodic thinnings. Foresters relate themselves to farmers uh, very directly because they're growing crops their crops are just much more shorter term than what our crops are. I take it upon myself to help private landowners manage their woodland. When we do a thinning, we come in for, uh, to assist them in meeting their goals today, but we're also coming back in 10 years, 20 years again, 30 years after that first harvest. Our long-term goal is to manage that woodlot in perpetuity for these landowners, so there's a a deep feeling of respect for that land and for the trees that are on that property. And in a lot of cases through thinning you can actually uh, increase and enhance the wildlife habitat out on our property. Certification standards will take into account practices that are done out on the field. What impacts that it had on soils, waters, wildlife as well as the long-term productivity of that forest. And they look at all of those in the certification uh, standards. Once a tree is cut down, that carbon in the tree is permanently stored, which then eventually gets sawn into lumber and made into furniture. So a well-managed forest is gonna suck up a lot more carbon dioxide uh, out of the atmosphere in the long term, as well as create much more uh, seedlings and younger, healthier, vigorous trees that are growing at faster rates. This is the after picture of doing that thinning. What we did is we took out the weeds in our vegetable garden. The poor quality, the diseased trees, uh, high risk trees that will not be here over the next 15 years. And what you're looking at is a very aesthetically pleasing uh, appearance to the trees that remain. They're well spaced. There are some openings in the area uh, that will allow sunlight to hit the forest floor and regenerate a new stand of trees as well. Here we are looking at seven years after the initial harvest. They've had a chance to grow and at the same time in the spaces where the sun has been allowed now to hit the forest floor we have gotten some natural seeding or natural regeneration to occur. We've got smaller stems uh, that have come in. This is our next crop of trees for the future generations. The misconception of the public is a lot of times they think that bigger trees are better trees. Here is a case where this tree is branching from a very low uh, distance up that tree. Very low quality material will come out of that. We actually will not even get hardwood lumber. It'll go for 
and be utilized for pulp wood or OSB wood in a low valued product. Here we are standing in a woods that has been recently thinned out. And you can see the appearance of the woods itself. Very aesthetic looking. The trees that are remaining are very well spaced, nice size and diameter, have a lot of room to grow. Just as I was mentioning the vegetables in the vegetable garden, the weeds are now gone. You have some good space between those trees. The trees that are there are well rooted. What you see here is a young hardwood stands. Trees begin at, at a young age, start out as seedlings, work their way to sapling stage, and then get to a young pull type of stage, which is getting moving in the direction of large saw timber. That happens over time. Our philosophy at Kretz is to uh, manage sustainably the forest over the long term. That basically means we're going to harvest and periodically thin out a forest without negatively impacting the soil, the water, the wildlife habitat, uh, or doing any destructive practices to that forest in the short term as well as the long term. We at Kretz Lumber Company have very high utilization standards in our harvesting operations. We will utilize everything in that tree down to approximately a three inch diameter. It, we call this slashings. We try to keep this as low as we possibly can to the ground so it deteriorates at a faster pace. What that does, it provides more nutrients in the soil long term to fertilize uh, the soil and decompose. Wildlife uses this type of habitat uh, throughout their life cycle. Here we are looking at an ephemeral pond. It's a depression in the forest floor that was created by the glaciers many, many years ago. Through our harvesting operations, we tend to leave buffers around these as well to respect that area as it is much less well-drained soil. So you don't want to come in and compact any soils or disturb that area because it's used by many invertebrates and that type of thing throughout the year. Occasionally we leave trees such as a snake tree here for wildlife benefits. Obviously it's not an attractive looking tree from a product standpoint, but it absolutely has wildlife benefits for habitat as, as well as feeding for birds. Ash is an ideal uh, species for furniture because in the forest setting especially, it's a tree that will grow very large diameter as well as tall in its growth. And in hardwoods that has much less defect in it than other species. From an appearance standpoint, it's straight grained. It's very pretty once it, it's finished. In northern hardwood species, the products that are made from those trees go into internal applications and housing uh, applications. So you're dealing with cabinetry, moldings, uh, those types of, of uses as well as furniture. People don't like to see knots and defects in those types of products in their home. So they like clean, clear material. So you don't want defects on the trees that are growing for those products. So here is a tree. This is a cherry tree here. If we cut this tree down now, it would not make saw lumber. So what we need to do over time is let this tree grow in diameter and once it gets to a certain diameter it will be mature and ready to be harvested for those types of product. Tim, we really want to thank you, uh, you know, for uh, having us here today and learning so much about the uh, sustainability of forests, but more importantly it's, it's really understanding the passion that you have uh, for the forest so that it can, it can last for many, many generations. Well, thanks for coming up. We appreciate it, and it's a great opportunity for us. And, you know, Bruce, you know, we, we look at the forest of, of northern Wisconsin uh, as a multi-generational treasure. I mean, bottom line is the landowners that we deal with own their properties for many, many years. And, and a lot of them pass that property on to their children and their grandchildren. So they look at their property as a legacy. And as I mentioned earlier, I mean, when I go onto a property and assist a landowner in their management of that forest, I really look at it as what would I do if this was my own property. So uh, bottom line, at Kretz, we want to respect that property, that land, and, and also 
create a relationship there long term and one I think that we'll have with you as well. Well, thanks again for your passion to the forest. Thank you.